Um, but I did um, uh, want to start because I really want to be conscious of, of Dave's time uh, and our time here together that we, you know, we, um, this is, uh, to me, one of the most exciting groups um, that, I, uh, that I believe has a tremendous future uh, for Hawaii um, because uh, we're working with implementers. We're the equippers of implementers. And it's the implementers that um, will really transform Hawaii as they're led by the Lord by the power of the Holy Spirit. We get to, you know, for those of us that are in the ecclesia side, we get to equip them so that they can be successful, you know, uh, in as implementers, as disciples of Jesus, you know. Um, and uh, and so, you know, uh, uh, yeah, so I just wanna welcome all of you uh, for this time. I know, um, Probably more going to be coming, but the key is, the key is the presence of the Lord, you know. And and you know, someone said, "Manifest presence of the Lord." What does that mean, manifest presence? You know, because sounds like one terminology, yeah, manifest presence. But you know, I was in a actually in a business meeting yesterday and was talking about. I said, you know, we all carry the presence of the Lord because we're all believers. But what we want to see is the presence of the Lord manifested, not just us being carriers, but we want to see it manifested. And that's why you got Peter and John, which we're reading in our Bible. They, they walk in with the presence of the Lord, but the Lord gets manifested when they heal the lame man at the gate. Beautiful. And at that point, everybody's going, hey, you know what? These guys, these are idiots. How can they do what they're doing? I mean, literally... They call them idiots in the Bible. It's called idiotas, uh, idiotai. You know? <laughs> and all of these highfalutin religious people going, these are idiots. How can they do it? And they figure they've been with Jesus because Jesus manifested himself. We can have one regular meeting, but we want the presence of the Lord to be made manifest, right? Not just the presence of it, but the presence of the Lord to be manifested in our midst. And so we gather together. Dave is our keynote, uh, the keynote speaker, but literally it is Jesus is going to be our keynote speaker as he's speaking through Dave to all of us, you know, and, and through all of you as we interact together. Yeah. So that being the case, I want to ask my beautiful wife, if, Joy, if you can open us up in prayer, would you please? Lord, we thank you. You are so beautiful. You are so majestic. You're so lifted up. And yeah, it's like we say, wow. Wow. We honor you today, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And we ask for your manifest presence, Lord. In our meeting today and we mm -hmm. want to declare into the heavenlies that we are gathered in the name of Jesus and um, thank you Lord for your promise that you mm -hmm. said you would be here so we bless you Lord we bless every person um, on the zoom call Lord we thank you for gathering us we thank you for Dave and the gifts that you've given to him that he's sharing with us today. So we bless him. We bless his entire ohana, Lord. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Well, you know, um, we are really, really blessed to have Dave here, uh, Dave Oyatamari. He is the executive vice president of customer experience and operations. That's one long title, man, Dave. <laughs> and uh, I was just, you know, looking at his bio. Um, it says in his role, he is responsible for improving the bank's operational efficiency while ensuring an excellent customer experience. Wow, that's his job. 
that's what he did at Bank of Hawaii. He did that for Bank of Hawaii. He uh, and turned around. I believe God used him to uh, literally bring transformation to Bank of Hawaii. And uh, then he went out and started his own business called the Ecclesia. Um, and um, uh, uh, and was, so how many businesses did you counsel, uh, Dave, that came uh, under Ecclesia? It was uh, amazing. It was over 120 from May through, I would say, end of November of 2020, during, like during the pandemic, you know. During the, pa in the teeth Crazy. of the pandemic and the shutdowns, you, and they're all small businesses. We're not talking uh, big, huge businesses, although they struggle too, but these are the little ones that will easily go under. What were, uh, like I was just thinking, what was the name of that shave I stand? Um, Shimazu. Shimazu? Yeah. It's yeah. on School Street? Yep, yep. Yeah? You guys all know that Shimazu shave ice stand, right? Mm -hmm. Terrific shave ice. Why would they survive the pandemic? When, when you know, can't even go. <laughs> they got to shut down. But did they survive? They absolutely survived. Um, you know, it, we call it pivot stuff, right? So when, when you can't act, serve shave ice what do you do right and they started to create ice cakes and then now they have like these um otter pop like things right like they call them k-pops <laughs> <laughs> and now it's making more of their revenue i believe yeah so um and you know you, you can imagine they can ship that people buy it in cases they send it to the mainland so uh it, it really helped diversify their revenue quite a bit <laughs> you know and that really was from the lord as you guys would come together, you know, God would give you guys these ideas, right? Yeah, you know, that's right. You know, it, and how many of these 120 businesses survive the pandemic? <laughs> um, I think almost all of them. I know of one pretty good size one. Um, they sold, you know, they, they sold out. I mean, when uh -huh. I say sold, they, they've now been purchased by another company. Because uh, they had a pretty good brand. Um, mm. But otherwise, yeah. I mean, it seems like everyone's kind of weathered the storm and <laughs> got through it. Um, but the important thing is the process, right? Is that they had other business owners that walked shoulder to shoulder with them through what was arguably one of the most difficult times that they've oh. seen in their memory. Um, and that's the beauty of it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much um, for... Uh, all that you've done, um, you know, and, and I'm going to go right into this, you know, uh, I could go on with your, your bio, but that, that's not what we're here for. I mean, this most of all, Dave is a brother in the Lord. And I have seen him, as you just heard, he also led a very successful accelerator group. Um, but, you know, you and I have been in t discussions with e each other. And you once mentioned to me that in coaching your groups, you allowed yourself to, to talk for only a short period of time and then have the group interact, right? Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, can you elaborate on that some more? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, um, there's a couple of things I'll, I'll say around that. Um, I think the first thing is that um, just seeing what my role is, is a connector, right? is that it's a way to connect people with each other um, and, and let them know that they have a lot in common with each other um, that they may not immediately see at the surface, right? So even if they're business owners, um, you know, they think somebody is in this industry, that industry, and like, what do we have in common, <laughs> you know? And, um, you know, pretty quickly what they're able to see when I talk less, I think, is that um, being a business owner, uh, there's a lot you have in common, such as it's pretty lonely. Um, that, you know, where do you put the stuff that you wrestle with every day um, that you don't want to maybe bring home with you uh, and tell your spouse <laughs> every day, right? Um, and so I think that was huge. That was first thing. 
The second thing I wanted to mention on that, Cal, is that, uh, and, and, and friends here, um, one of the things I ask in every single session, and I and this was deliberate, and I do think it helps quite a bit. It seems simple, and it might even seem like, why are we doing this? But I do think it creates a mindset shift. And the question that everyone is asked every single week is, tell us something good that happened this past week. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and what happens is, so, so, so why we do it is that, um, you know, you know, it's going to be asked every week and some people you can tell are like, they, like each week they come, they, they come as if it's like, Oh, I'm surprised that you asked this question. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but you know, after like maybe a few weeks they they come prepared, but the reason why I think that works is because it's a mindset shift to say that we should look for the good things and the blessings that God is doing in our lives all the time. And it's easy, especially in business, as business owners, sir, to focus on all the things you, you didn't do, got to be done, got to be fixed. So it's a very different opening than I found when you come into a, a group, instead of saying, hey, how's it going? Tell us how's it going. Immediately when you open with that, people go to the negative stuff. Like, oh, well, you know, I got this, mm -hmm. I, I got a worker. But when you say, no, tell us something good that happened mm -hmm. last week, mm -hmm. the mindset shifts. And then mm -hmm. each week you're reminded to look for all the good things that God is doing. And because um, he's always at work, right? Mm -hmm. So so I think that um, it, it's, a, it's almost like a, it's, like I said, it's a cultural shift, a mindset shift, a discipline. And um, there are some people in the group that <laughs> it took them a while, right? They're like, well, I don't know. I don't know of anything good. And we're like, really? Nothing good entirely in this. And then we'll say, we'll come back to you and we'll talk. And then they'll come back and say, well, there is this thing. And we're like, well, that's great. Right? Like, that's awesome. And then it becomes easier and easier as the weeks go on. Little things like that. Wow. Wow. Well, be encouraging to each other, celebrate with each other. Um, yeah. So and you I, apply I, this, you apply this to both secular as well as church audiences that you that you're working absolutely. with absolutely yeah absolutely and when i when i started here at the bank um people didn't really know me you know and i had a team of directors about 10 of them and i would open like that tell us something good that happened this past week <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they would kind of look mm -hmm. at me a little odd like are we going to talk about like, what my tasks are what my objectives are for the week but this is a way to uh, see what's important in that person's mind, life, mm -hmm. um, and then celebrate together. And inevitably, mm -hmm. um, what I found happened, even in the secular space here at the bank, is it shifted from, uh, oh, yeah, we got this accomplished, you know, this upgrade, this system, mm -hmm. yay, right? Oh, we hired this person, okay? It shifted from that to things like, um, my daughter from the mainland came to visit uh, us this past weekend, and we had a barbecue. It was so good to just hang out with her, you know, and we haven't done that in so long. Um, and then people started to talk personally about what well, the good things that were happening in their life. And it, it, it created this, this dynamic I, I, I thought was really nice. Um, so that's called, that's called Ohana. <laughs> <laughs> Very simple. Uh, right. But yeah, but it's, uh, it's a mindset thing because we all got stuff going on, right? Everyone's uh, got uh -huh. stuff going on. So you do that every week when you, you would start your sessions is, you know. Tell yeah, us that's, good. Yeah. that's first, uh, I, Daniel, our, our son, with his family, every day in the dinner time, they all they answer the question, what did you love about today? What did you learn from today? Wow. And, and each child, each person shares uh around the table you know yeah. that's this is very similar to yeah. that you know when, and, when i pick up my son josh he's 11th grade now uh high school and i pick him up and that's the question josh what went good today at school <laughs> uh, <laughs> he knows i'm gonna ask he knows I'm gonna... <laughs> yeah uh yeah uh, that's awesome 
That's awesome. So, so this is, it, it's spilled into your personal life as well, uh, which is what we want to see happen in the lives of the people that we're leading, right? I mean, that it'll spill into their personal lives. But, you know, also, uh, as you're leading these, uh, these groups, you also want to impart to them knowledge and that they, they get equipped in knowledge. How do you find the balance then uh, of uh, this interaction and imparting knowledge to them? Hmm. Um, it, it's like, uh, I, I guess there's, there's a couple of things there too, right? Like one is empathy, as for me, right? Is I think it's hard to receive knowledge or anything until someone feels that you love them and that you you empathize with them you might not fully understand it but they got to know you're on their side that mm. i think that's number one right and and so um i think that that's always step one for me is uh um they know i'm coming from a place where i want what's best for them and uh and I'm listening, you know, one of the things that this last group told me, which I wish I recorded so I could share with my wife, Tammy, <laughs> is they said, Dave, you're a really good listener. <laughs> mm. And I don't particularly think of myself, quite frankly, as a good listener, but um, I do try hard to, to understand where everyone's coming from. And I repeat it and I connect it and I say it back to them um, throughout the, the, the time we have together. This is so interesting, Dave, yeah. because you're the leader, but they're saying you're a good listener. That's, that's really something we got. Yeah. We got to unpack this even I, more. I I'm like, when, when people share, um, like you know, in the beginning, we we'll say, what do you, what are your hope for this group? You know, something like that. Why are you here? You know? Uh, and then, then we also do every week, tell us something good. I'm taking furious notes. Um, and the notes I'm taking are kind of like, what does this tell me about this person? Like, you know, like, what am I learning about them? What's important to them? Um, you know, like all those stuff I try to pick up. And then, and then um, inevitably that comes back in something that they're saying later or sharing with another person. And I think maybe that's what they're picking up on is, is that I'm super invested in them. That that's, that's a high priority for me. And um, so they call it like, you're a good listener. What, what I think they're picking up on is like, I, I really am trying to understand you and what drives you and what you're wrestling with and your perspective on the world. Right. Um, that's really what I'm after. Wow. Wow, this is incredible. Uh, it, this is so good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so good, Dave. Okay, go I mean, on. You guys all do it. I mean, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, like something that I, um, I don't know, I just value it, you know, like, so that's, that's number one, right? So there's two things. So number one was that empathy and yeah. um, making sure that they know I'm looking out for their best and I'm really trying hard to understand them and what's important to them. And I think that's foundational. The second thing is when you're like, when I think about imparting knowledge, I'm very careful um, how I deliver it to uh, in that um, I, I avoid things like, Hey, you should, or, have you thought about this? Like a consultant, right? I, I, I'm very careful not to come across that way. And instead um, come across in a manner in which uh, I'm speaking from stories and experience. So for example, um, if I think someone was, was making a decision that I thought, ooh, you know, I, I think that could end not in a good outcome. <laughs> um, Rather than say, hey, I don't know if I agree with that or, you know, um, hey, you want my opinion on that or, you know, those are nothing wrong with it. But instead, what I try to do, it's helped me, at least you guys, is I say stuff like, hey, you know, in my experience, um, what I've seen, um, you know, 
folks that are kind of in your situation do. Let me tell you the story of this, this guy, you know, this other business owner. And he had this situation and this is what he did and this is what he learned. I'm essentially saying the same thing, but what I find is it allows the receiver to um, get to the same answer themselves without me telling them the answer, right? Mm. Um, so like, um, I don't know, I'm trying, to think of, I'm trying to think of a very specific example where this came up. Um, uh, like, um, it, it could be even small things like this, okay? Like there was a discussion at one point around prices. Should I raise my prices? You know, uh, I don't want people to think I'm gouging them and can they afford it? And I might lose demand and things like this, right? Very easy to be like, oh yeah, you better raise prices now. I mean, costs going up, increase 20%, whatever. You could do that, right? And then at, at that point, you're a consultant and they can either receive it or whatever, right? Or you can say, hey, you know what? When I've seen other businesses, when they face this situation, uh, they would raise prices and nothing really happened to demand and it actually worked out for them and people understood, you know, so that's what I saw. And so something that you may want to think about. And then like, usually like a day later, they go, hey, Dave, so I thought about what you said. I raised my prices. <laughs> you know? And then mm. this is what happened. And I'm like, great, man. That's awesome. Mm. Hey. So it's these little things like that, I think, um, that, you know, that's the second thing is more telling the stories, uh, an example, um, and allowing them to, to sort of just digest it and decide for themselves, um, uh, which is, again, a different approach. You know, yeah. again, more about me talking less and them kind of you know, diving in. And when you're in a group, then others can chime in too, right? Like, oh yeah, uh -huh. this is what I see. Right? I see. Uh -huh. Versus uh -huh. like, uh, you know, you know, like Dave, the guru is telling us what to do. Like, no, you know, mm -hmm. it's really the power of, of all of them together, um, working together is, is the goal. Mm. Oh man, awesome. So empathy and how I deliver it as two really important things, you know, um, and, yeah. you know, and part of it, you know, I'm realizing because, uh, you know, I'm working with uh, our staff, it, it's the switch over has taken place and is taking place from boomers to uh, Xers and to millennials that are leading. And there is a different culture of how we communicate, you know, as a boomer, uh, what uh, 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 are what our guys tell me, is that you guys talk so mean to each other. <laughs> what do you mean talk mean to each other? This is not the way you guys talk. The way you and Uncle Ronnie talk to each other. You guys, I, go, so I know you guys are not offended, but you guys just talk. And, 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 I'm so and, offended. I'm just so offended. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, yeah. Nah, 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 nah. Right? You know, I mean, Ronnie can, but it's because it's a different culture. I mean, and 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 I want to, and I say, and I say, and you should have heard the way our parents talk to each other. If you think this is odd, this is like nothing compared to them, you know. And but uh, it's also this is a cultural and generational mm -hmm. change of how how we communicate with each other, mm -hmm. you know, and how that care is communicated to each other. It, what I'm hearing you say, it's not truth first. It's Empathy comes first mm -hmm. um, before the truth, and and doing it in a loving mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. uh, Interesting. That, that, that's what I'm hearing you say. What do you think? Yeah, that I never thought about it that way, but it is interesting. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Like, um, I'm thinking about the conversations I have with the millennials and the Gen Z folks, and it absolutely starts with them feeling and and trusting that you're you got their best interest it, it's not a given and um and they're i think they're hungry for it i think they're hungry for mentorship i think they're hungry for guidance um but you know like the old school way is like um 
if I don't talk to you to tell you you're screwing up, that means you're doing good. You know, like that's the old school. Way. <laughs> and 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 then, but the the younger generation, they're like, hey, wow, you don't you don't tell me I'm doing a good job, or you don't tell me you know whatever. Like you don't you don't interact with me, so they they want that. And so mm. I think it starts with the empathy and and making sure they understand that yeah, you you love them, that you're looking out for the best for them. And um, the the challenge though becomes later, right? Is that I think there's less patience in the younger generations, you know, um, than I think the prior, um, where it's like, well, how do I become a vice president? You know, you know, older generation. Vice president, president, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. How do I become CEO? What does it take? Can you create that roadmap for me to become CEO? You know, um, Whereas like, I think, you know, like, yeah, the prior generations, we talk about it as like pay your dues or just do a good job, but that's, that's not enough for them. They, they want they want more. Yeah. Mm. So um, that's the challenge, the tension there, the patience. Um, and so what I tell folks, I'm sorry, let's get a little bit off track, but with the, with the millennial, the younger generations, I tell them like, look, your goal. Okay. I know you can look at social media and you want title and pay and, because everyone else is saying that's what it's about. I said, but your goal is influence and relevance. You know what I mean? Like, is, is that you're at the stage in your career where you need to build that ability to have influence and relevance wherever you are. So, um, so focus on that <laughs> and, and the rest will follow. Not so much uh, title and pay. <laughs> you know? wow. So uh, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but certainly stuff I impart to my son. And I, I hope he, he takes that. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. You know, one of the highlights of your accelerator accelerator group in the last session was how you would, how you would highlight an individual, oh. uh, you know, and that, that, that tell us about this, how you would highlight a particular individual in every session and um, and what that did for the group. Yeah, so this was, I, I kind of stepped out a little bit uh, in faith on this one. Uh, and I told the, told the group, I said, okay, so this is not scripted. Uh, this is not even part of the accelerator <laughs> curriculum per se. So I'll, I might get lapped on the wrist or something like that. But I, <laughs> but I felt, uh, I felt this was important and I asked permission and they said, go for it. Okay. And what it was is I said, um, I've had experience success before where I had this thing called a hot seat and they said, okay, what is this? I said, the hot seat is where each one of us will have an opportunity to be on the hot seat, which means you'll share a, a challenge or some dilemma or something that you're facing that you want feedback from the other folks in the group. And, um, and so it's an opportunity for everybody to focus on you for that session and that people can, um, you know, provide feedback and what have you, right? Chance for you to be vulnerable. It's a safe environment, right? So the way it would work was, I, I think you, you can adjust it, but just to give you a sense of how the timing broke down, it was like this, um, let's say five minutes, you share some challenge that you're facing, work, home, whatever it is you wanna share with the group. Then the next five minutes, so that's first five minutes, the second five minutes, people would ask clarifying questions of fact. And this is really important, the, the questions aren't to be leading, right? So this is not like the, if someone says, you know, I'm really struggling, with my son, he's rebellious, whatever. This isn't the, the, the time to say, um, you know, well, have you tried reading, you know, like growing kids God's way or something like, like that's not a clarifying question. The clarifying question is things like, um, how does your son, right? How often do you get to spend with your son? Um, what do you guys talk about, right? So it's just so that you can understand the facts of the context of the situation, okay? So that's five minutes, is people are asking clarifying questions. Then the third part is about 
call it seven minutes or so, where then the person who's on the hot seat is just fly on the wall. So they can turn off their video if it's over Zoom and they just listen. And what everyone else is doing is talking about their situation um, with them kind of just listening. So it's like, yeah, you know, so David, you know, I've, I've heard of his situation and, you know, I, what it makes me think about is maybe he should do this because um, I've experienced this. And someone said, yeah, I agree with that or I don't. So, so they're just talking about you and you're just on the listening. And then the last three minutes. Uh, so this is what, 17, 20 minutes now. Right? The last three minutes or so is the person comes back and says, what did you hear and what are you taking away from that time where we talked about you? And that, what that does is it really opens up the group to a, a vulnerability. And I found that um, there's so much good. Like that, that's where they realize, wow, we have a lot in common and shared experience and, and all of that comes out in that, in well, that time. What, what, did it, what, what does that person, uh, when they come back, they answer the question, what did you hear and what now? What are some of the key takeaways from what you heard? And so they'll say things like, wow, I really like that suggestion that so-and-so had about this. Or I really, I didn't think about it that way. Or, you know, um, so yeah. So they're just coming back and saying, you know, this is what I heard and this is what I'm taking away from what you guys were saying about my situation. Um, so that's generally it, you know, five, five, seven, three, but you know, it could be longer. Like if you want to make it 30 minutes, you can break it. But the, the proportion is what I wanted to communicate is it's roughly that. Um, of that, you know, the hard part Go is ahead. the clarifying questions because um, it, it's so natural for us to want to dive in, <laughs> you know, and like- Fix it. So we want to fix it. We want to fix it. We want to help right away. But that's not the time. The time to talk about your solutions and ideas are when the person's a fly on the wall. You are just asking questions to understand. And, um, and I usually have to repeat that with these groups over and over because it's not, it's not natural. So during that solutions time, you know, when you're talking about that person, you got to pretend that person is not there. Yeah. As you're talking. So right? sometimes that's helps. Yeah. If you're on zoom, it helps to just tell them, turn off your camera, uh, turn off your camera, go on mute. It does help. Yeah. Otherwise, what I found sometimes happens if they don't, um, you end up talking directly to them. Right. Right. Hey, right. Dave, you know, I like, it's, you know, you're not really talking to them. You're talking about them. Right. With your, your peers. Yeah. And, and it's not like you can talk stink about them. Like, oh, that guy's such an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> never. It's never happened. No. <laughs> uh, because people are feeling that empathy. How can we help? at that point and what would be some advice we would say or do in that situation? You got all these minds of people who are empathizing with you in many ways can read some of the things you're going to resonate with them who are now focusing on you and your challenge. And there's something there. There's something really powerful in that. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I, I think that's been one of the, the great things I've seen come out of this. Wow. Wow. I mean, because that, uh, I mean, people for the rest of you guys know that uh, the hot seat concept was huge in breakthroughs. It, even in doing the accelerator, you did this as you walked through the accelerator with each of your group members, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and the results were phenomenal. Yeah. You can well, well, it, mm -hmm. go ahead. Go ahead. Well, it, it, it creates a vulnerability, right? Because I just shared with, with these people here, um, my biggest challenge, the, the thing that I'm wrestling with, uh, you know, and it, it's personal. Um, and so that, that um, is, is a, a way I think to build bonds, you know, pretty quickly. And then to hear people um, encourage, affirm you, but also sometimes give you candor, radical candor about your situation. Um, that's a form of love right there, right? And and mm. I think uh, I think it's it's amazing to me. I you know it, it, it I've just seen it work very well.
And wow. especially when you're in an accelerator where you have fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, we already have something in common. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, so, mm -hmm. and so it's very natural to then pray for each other about whatever that is and reference it uh, and invite the Holy Spirit there too, right? So it's, it's, it's really even more powerful when there's that common bond. As you as you did it with your accelerator group, it was all men, and and they don't know who was in your accelerator. I don't think they know who was in your accelerator. Could you share, without giving names, what was some of the fruit that you saw happen in your accelerator group because of this method? Oh, uh, here here's what's interesting, right? So these are all, I think, business people, um, but um, inevitably there was a, a fair amount of discussion about family. Um, and that's where you know you've reached a different level, yeah? Um, about their relationship with their spouse, it, about a uh, relationship with a son-in-law, uh, about um, uh, like something that they're wrestling with, it, you know, their personal life and their business life and all of that kind of blurs and you hear their hopes, their dreams for their family, but for their career and all like, that's where the rubber met the road. <laughs> it's really, wow. Not, you know, it, it's not, uh, at that point, like, it's not as much about, I would say the, the, um, curricula, you know, it's these, these, these folks that are just now kind of doing life in a way together. And, and so by the last session, it was like, you know, guys are saying, like, well, I'm going to miss this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss, you know, hanging out with you guys and having a place to share this stuff and all that. And um, yeah, so, you know, so I think wow. good, fruit, good fruit there. Oh, and, no, it's really you know. good fruit, really good fruit, because they're multiplying it now in their spheres now because uh, the guys that are in your group weren't part of your sphere or even a part of our sphere they're taking it back to their spheres and uh and oh. this multiplication is happening which is what the ideal of what we want to see happen cool. isn't this good guys what, what he's sharing um you guys have uh, uh, you know in, in the time we have remaining it, uh, um well dave is there anything you want to say uh, to us as leaders of Accelerator, um, anything mm. you want to pass on to us? Mm. I don't know. I, I guess I'm sure each of you do it in your own way, right? And as it reflects who you are. So that's awesome. Um, I just shared like my way, you know, like how, how, I, how it's seen, I've seen it play out in my um, sphere. I, I think... Um, the encouraging thing would be um, the fact that you guys all love the Lord and are devoting this time to invest in other people is in itself something that's awesome. And um, when the people you work with know that, um, only good can come out <laughs> after that, you know, and there's no formula, you know, I don't think there's a formula. I think once people know that you love them and where you're coming from. And that we talked about at the beginning, uh, we invite the manifest presence of Jesus here whenever we meet, the rest will, will, will work out itself. And so um, I'm happy to share my experience and if it helps you in some way, great. Um, I just encourage you, you know, what you guys are doing is awesome. Wow. wow. All right, any questions or comments that any of you guys have? I mean, you can just bless him too for sharing this. This is gold, man. <laughs> this is being passed yeah. on. I'm glad. So, yeah. Okay, unmute yourselves. Yeah. You guys can go ahead, Joy. I Thank you so much, Dave. I really, really appreciate you sharing with us. And one thing I really, um, I think for me, being the way I was raised for in leadership, like, it's like you're the leader and like you were saying you got to be the guru but i like what you said that the role is connector mm -hmm. that you know they connect with each other and that's okay you know that they connect with each other and i really like that oh, I'm glad. My, yeah <laughs> go ahead. 
my question is how what's the size best size of a group that you have found eight eight probably no more than ten uh yeah i think eight to ten i found is is kind of the right amount and it's this i think it's this I, i'm just thinking about why that number is good is because if it's too big people can feel anonymous and they don't have to engage <laughs> mm. if it's too small they feel like oh my gosh i gotta engage you know too much pressure to talk because it's only me <laughs> and then, you know. so mm. i think eight to ten i think is probably the ideal but our accelerated group was just four of us i want to say yeah. yeah. So it, it can work, you know, with smaller groups, but um, I feel like I feel like about eight is probably ideal. You know, that's via it, Zoom or in person or done. Matter. It was via Zoom. It was via Zoom. Yeah, I because eight was like enough for people to not feel as much pressure to talk, <laughs> um, and and yet in small enough where it was intimate and they could engage. Mm. And that's that was just my experience, but I know accelerator might be a little smaller i saw right like we did four and stuff like that mm -hmm. hey carl how's it well how long did you guys meet because if it's eight people like how would you how long would the session be oh uh i think we met for like hour and a half mm. oh okay okay yeah carl thank you Sure. Yeah, I just wanted to say um, thanks, Dave, for taking time out, as as you have done so many times. Uh, um, but I just want to share like what the Lord has been doing. You know, since the first time you came on TOW, um, it inspired me to start my own LLC. Wow. And and then um, you you met with Ryan. Yep. Right. And uh, one of our guys here, and he started his own LLC. And then. <laughs> And then through that first meeting, because Pastor Jay was on it, he's in the process of starting his own LLC. <laughs> and so, awesome. and then, and then there's bigger, like it's kingdom things, you know, it's all um, uh, the way that these businesses were started at all based off of biblical principle. Mm. You know? Love so it. it's really exciting. And we're, we're looking at like, how do you utilize the Ecclesia in these businesses? Right. And so I couldn't be the, the head of the LLC that I started because of but it's care for my mom, you know, mm. but it, so I got my cousin who has a heart to care for my mom uh, to be the, the chief member, you know, so through <laughs> that, we're praying together way more than ever. Wow. It's like uh, we, we set aside budget to make sure the first 10% of the gross goes to Jesus. Wow. You know, it's like it's and this is somebody who has not not regularly gone to church and stuff like that and uh oh. and then that same kind of principles we're trying to incorporate into these other things and then all of a sudden it's like people that i'm meeting at at the church is like uh, i don't know how this conversation comes up but um this one guy wants to sell his pool business and i'm talking to him i go you know thomas we're I think it's like the Lord is bringing up these things about um, business and utilizing like even something like a pool business to be an extension of Jesus. He goes, mm. that's what my dad did. He would talk to all his customers about Jesus <laughs> and mm. he would evangelize his customers. I was mm. like, that is so crazy. Wow. So um, <laughs> anyway, I just wanted I, to say thank you. and um, Thank you. Encourage for that inspiration and um it's like now now my wife wants to start this llc called um, <laughs> yeah fran wants to start this llc called um the seal of aloha you know and it's just highlighting businesses that share the spirit of aloha in mm. hawaii you know wow. and so she wants to do that and you know? it's like so crazy <laughs> like well, i don't know where this thing is going but uh, wow there's something there. Cool. Yeah, it's all the Lord. So awesome. Oh, and, so, okay. and I just want one more thing. Sorry, guys. But um, you were talking about uh, University of Hawaii football, I think. Yeah, earlier. Yeah. So I just got confirmation today through a text that I'm going to set a regular prayer time with David Matlin. Oh, nice. So um, 
so he just texted me. I was his accountability brother for like years before. Oh, but nice. um, yeah, he he said, yeah, I gotta put God first, and mm. um, it's just exciting. It's just like somebody who's super special to me, and mm. um, yeah. So anyway, thanks thanks for letting Terrific. me share. Yeah, just hey, thank you so man. much. Terrific. Thanks so hey, much, man. Carl. All right, yeah. Jocelyn, you had you had a. <laughs> question or comment or whatever coming for david so david i met you in 2005 with the kakao kakaako bunch and uh so i had so much pressure from francis oda and caroline call david call david because i don't know if you can see the background of my picture your building i look at your building for my apartment <laughs> so, uh, so there was pressure, Daniel kind of sure. You got to talk to David, talk to David. <laughs> what are do? Hi, David, I know you're from 2005. I need to come and talk about transforming Chinatown. <laughs> so what happened was you guys, you guys had sponsorship of the Hawaii Theater Centennial. And I'm thinking, and I got invited by Teresa. And I'm thinking, I'm going to meet David. Now I don't have, I can just meet him. And you were at a football game at Michigan or something. <laughs> <laughs> but I connected with Cecilia Fong. Oh, great. We're going to do some wonderful things in Chinatown from that connection. But the pressure I got, <laughs> Caroline, every week at Chinatown prayer meeting, did you get a hold of David? Did you get a hold of David? <laughs> so I'm going to tell them I met you in an accelerator hub meeting <laughs> you know I, I because i had invited both of them to this meeting yeah. neither of them are here you know? <laughs> but yeah they definitely yeah. wanted to connect with you uh oh. both francis and caroline yes uh, yeah good people yes. yeah and yeah, yeah I, I also I, it brought to mind i gotta tell you guys i was contacted a little while ago by this guy in tennessee um, and he had heard about what I was doing, you know, with these groups and through the back. long story short. Now he's going to kick off. Um, he calls it like town square, something like that, you know, and try to do something similar. So I've been helping him with that and just encouraging him too, because he wanted to like launch it in Tennessee. So I'm like, yes, you know, go this guy, Walt, uh, Walt, what is his last name? But anyway, so yeah, I just want to let you know, like, yeah, it's, it's resonating wow. somehow with people, you know, all the way in Tennessee, yes. which is great. Yeah. Well, you know, some of our accelerator came from Tennessee in the last round. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so I know they heard about you and what you were doing, too. So I don't know where it goes from there. But uh, yeah, someone else, anyone else got a question or comment or? Yeah, go ahead, Daryl. Hey, Dave. Hey, Daryl. Uh, Good to see you, man. And thanks for this stuff. This is really awesome. I mean, really. Um, my question was, you know, when you broke it down 5573, five, I can see it easily morphing over those times. So do you try and keep it very specific to around the, that time frame? Because, you know, like the seven minute where the person listens, you know, if you got pastors there, one person can talk. <laughs> 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 who are you talking about who are you talking I, about hey, no, nobody you know <laughs> you castle guys you're just too sensitive what's the matter no. <laughs> oh i feel so offended right now daryl <laughs> uh, but I, you know i i the time frame 20 minutes you try and keep it to that yeah i try i do try so let's see um um yeah, the hardest one, the, the part where I, I, I guess I'm not too legalistic on the like, got to be five, got to be five. You know, it's more like in totality, 20 minutes or totality, 30 minutes. Right. I do try to keep it into that total time frame, less so about, you know, the individual slots. Um, I think where I mean, I think like so. So some tips on like what I would do if it felt like it was running long, like, especially like the question piece. And then we got to really get to talking about that person stuff. So it literally is stuff like, well, like if someone's asking questions, I'll just jump in and be like, 
Okay, how about one more question? You know, we got time for one more question and then we really got to get into like, let's talk about this now because there's a lot of lot here, right? So it's, it's just finding that transition thing to cut it off and then go. And then when you're in that seven minute piece and people are talking and it can get really deep and all that, they say, you know, this is really good stuff, but we really need time now to, to bring so-and-so back to wrap it up. And, uh, and so you will find, Daryl, I think, I think to what you're alluding to, you could go an hour or two hours easy, 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 easy. Um, and so it, it is like this thing of like, um, you know, let's follow the time, respect the time. And, uh, you know, we can always come back and, you know, follow up later or something like that. But it's, it's finding that transition. Yeah. I've heard, um, I, I never did this, but sometimes some people will set a clock and then uh, play like a favorite song or some funky song, like an Elvis song or something comes on. And then it's more like the, 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 the musical hook, you know, on the Oscar right. is kind of like, kind of like, Oh, there's Elvis. We better stop and move on. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I don't know if that helps, but. Ron, right. was that you, Ron? Was that you? Ron? Yes. Yes. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you. <laughs> Play oh, no, that's good. oh, there's Ron. We got to cut it off. No, <laughs> uh, no that was awesome. Right. Thank you. Yeah, that helped. Very good. Very, very good. Hope so. All right. Jed, you had any comments or questions? Or Ronnie, for that matter? Yes. Well, first, thanks, Dave. I mean, it incredible. Dave. I really appreciate Dave. it. And um, for me, just coming out of my position as an educator is um, what you're sharing is so mm -hmm. important for teachers, administrators to understand. And because that's a law, yeah, being present and trying to breed life. And um, mm -hmm. I mean, it was such a challenge trying to get teachers to have empathy for our mm -hmm. kids, you know, and you're exactly right. Mm -hmm. The kids not going to have a harder time receiving the knowledge that you're giving them if you don't care. And during the pandemic, what happened was everybody, um, uh, uh, an organization in the mainland, safe and civil schools that they help um, have safe uh, um, schools and so forth. During the start of the pandemic, everybody was worried about what's gonna happen and was so much negativity. On our side as a school, kind of God gave the revelation that it's gonna be an exciting time for our school because there's gonna be a shift that because of the, um, systems we have to put in place it's really going to um, help our kids to develop self-control but what happened in the process is that we put adults in the walkways and teachers by their doors and each child when they came to school was about three to five adults saying good morning how you doing and mm -hmm. so forth and the transformation mm -hmm. of that in the in the lives of the students that they would really feel that there was a part that somebody cared for them and so forth. And so um, another thing that happened was um, I had the Koloi kids. And, um, and so one of the programs they um, suggested was this thing called two by 10. Um, talking story with the kids for two minutes for 10 days straight. And um, it was more like a 10 by 10. But once again, it kind of relates to what you're saying. It's just mm -hmm. giving the kid that space of having that empathy and a lot of times they directed the conversation of mm -hmm. where it is. And so sometimes it lasted for one boy, it lasted the whole year. And, but yet it, it minimized his challenges on campus. For other kids, it was after that, okay, for me, I said, okay, that was our 10 meeting. You want to continue? So I'm oh, Mr. T, so I'm good. So, and, and it was good. And then it was just a checkup. Yeah, how are you doing? And so forth. And mm -hmm. so um, I totally okay. agree what you're saying as far as okay. the balance of imparting knowledge. It starts with the empathy. It's part with the aloha showing that you present the alo and breathing life over them and then just being sure of how you um, lay out the suggestions. And so, uh, yeah, I awesome. think um, with the group is going to be great. Wow. Thank Thanks, you. Jed. Yeah. All right. By the way, Dave's wife uh, was just appointed as the assistant director to the superintendent of the DOE. <laughs> So, so Dave, you better pass on what Jed just shared to your wife. You know, better you better do that. You know, 
<laughs> She's got. <laughs> no, yeah. no. In fact, I got to pray for the superintendent, call them all. And I, oh, I don't nice. realize, yeah, I just went up to him and said, hey, how's it, buddy? You're the superintendent, eh? He goes, oh, uh, yeah. I said, hey, I can pray for you or what? He said, oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> oh, I used to be a teacher at Kalu School, so uh, I just want to receive you as our superintendent. And so, uh, but yeah, I'm excited for him. Uh, he's a good dude. All right. All right. Um, Ronnie, uh, I'm going to have, I'm sorry, we, a time has escaped us because I really want Dave to pray an impartation over mm -hmm. us in closing because impartation is for real. It's the mana that you have received from the Lord. You're passing on to us, you know, and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and it goes beyond the brain into our spirits and soul. So would you pray an impartation yeah. to all of us? Heavenly Father, Lord, um, Lord, Lord, it's my honor. It is truly, truly my honor to serve you. I thank you for every person here um, and the, the folks who weren't able to make it today, uh, that they just are obedient and are following you on their knees, Lord. Mm -hmm. We know that um, your character is one of love. Uh, and you do in part, uh, but I think it starts with love. And would you would we reflect that in every person we come in contact with, in our groups, in our work, in our social spheres, um, that we would reflect the best of you in, in our interactions with empathy, with love. And I pray, Lord, for everyone here that um, as they receive that, that all the calling you have for their lives and the people you've put in their sphere, that um, we just be a, a smile to your face yeah. in how we reflect uh, the best of what you have for every person. Mm -hmm. We thank you for that honor you, you've given us and uh, may we be good stewards of that. And um, yeah, I just pray that we will it will continue and, and multiply and uh, advance your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Dave, I don't know how to say thanks to you. Uh, this is, I kind of put money down because this is going to change lives. It's changing our lives. We're definitely making use of this. This is, it is, it is how to live out aloha uh, as leaders. You um, you've really, really blessed us today, right, good guys? Yes. Just, Thank you. You guys bless me. Thank you. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, this hour flew by. It mm -hmm. literally flew by. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Dave. We love you. May God bless.